Video shows hundreds on the roof of a train making its way north through Mexico. Well, those migrants are part of an unbroken train stretching all the way back to South America. The impact of thousands of people making the trek north is taking a huge toll on the communities through which they pass. Chuck Holton brings us the story from the Darien Gap. What was once one of the most remote and pristine jungles on planet Earth is now an environmental disaster. Trash litters the banks of the river locals once depended on for their water. Now the bitter irony is that in a place which gets a dozen feet of rain each year, these indigenous tribes have to import bottled water. So it's about eight o'clock in the morning on the Rio Turquesa going into the Darien Gap, and we're starting to pass dozens and dozens of these boats coming out completely full of migrants. You see all these migrants here behind me. They're from all over the world and they're all headed out to the river end where the road is. The problem is there are not enough boats to get them out of here and get them down to the road where they can continue their journey to the United States. Three hours up river, we come to the last village before reaching the Colombian border. The scene is apocalyptic. Thousands of migrants arrive each day, more than six times the village's original population. There's nowhere to sleep and no adequate facilities for the crush of humanity dragging in after six days in the jungle. People line up to register for the boat ride out, standing for hours under the merciless sun. Although many suffer from heat stroke, the tiny clinic has almost nothing to offer. Yeah, we're here five minutes and there's people passing out left and right. The sun came out, it's super hot. They don't have many resources here to help. This is really what they need. They need resources. These guys, they, they need volunteers. They need supplies. With thousands of people coming in here every day, there's just no way that they can take care of all the people that are coming in with needs because by this time, they've already been walking through the jungle for five or six days. And so they get here, they're all half dead. Some of them are mostly dead. And like this one right here, just dehydrated, passed out in the sun, and they really need time to recover before they continue their journey. And many are dying in the jungle. People who was passing the river, they could just see the dead bodies in front of them. And me and my friends, we just go and we just covered them with some plastics because we didn't want some wild animals to eat them or something. And also there were some children and also some families, they were passing from that path. We didn't want them to see the dead bodies. Hmm. And it was extremely, extremely dangerous way. Now, the tribe has reached a breaking point. They've decided to build a separate camp for the migrants across the river, one that will hold up to 15,000 people. We've decided that it has to be a shelter away from the community, which should give migrants their own place for food and shelter, as this has affected every aspect of our lives, including social, economic, cultural, and even education. Right now, they are defecating in the same streets where they are sleeping. Nobody wants that. We want everything to be well organized and in order, so that the migrants feel better when they come to the community. This year, the number of people traversing the gap en route to the United States has exceeded 350,000, which is already 100,000 more than 2022. And despite the toll in human misery, the numbers just keep rising. From Panama, I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News. A much-needed report.